This is the electric bike, the Apollo Metis, M-E-T-I-S. Ladies bike predominantly. It's driven by a motor in the front wheel that cuts in after about two seconds of pedaling. And then assists, and you can set the level it cuts in by the control here, low, medium and high. It states the battery's worth about 20 kilometers, but that's continuous. What we found is that the battery on this, as we can indicate here, still has a three quarter charge in it. And yet we've done many, many miles on it, but since we're mostly on the level, the electric's hardly been used. The battery's only ever been charged once when it was bought last year. So the range is incredibly good. If you're going up and down hills all the time, then obviously it will reduce. You'll need to charge it more frequently. The problem we've got today is we need to get this into a very small car. So we need to take off the front wheel. The instructions are abysmal from Apollo. Um, the manual online covers two bikes, two different bikes. Um, doesn't actually cover removing this front wheel. So that's what this video is going to be about. The brakes, as you can see, are centered, but they pull from one side, but they kind of balance each other out. They pivot here, which is great because the pull at the top there pulls both pads against, or both blocks rather, against the, the bike wheel, and that's fine. But a very, very simple mechanism here, I just discovered, uh, first time I've looked at it, and that's simply to Take up the tension there to pull both together and this as you can see there will just come out of this slot and that's the brakes open then ready for part of the wheel job. Next thing we have to do, one side of this that should have a cap on it, didn't come with a cap from Halfords sadly, um, the others have got caps on the back even though there's no electrical connection so I just, I'm guessing it should have a cap. This is standard is it six speed or one, two, three, four, five? Yes, six speed gears, which are great to use with the battery there. Shimano gears, which are brilliant. Um, as you can see, the axle caps are in place there for both. We've got a gel seat for it, which is great. And the battery slides into this rack and it can slide out very easily, but you need a key to do it, which we have. All electrical connections are plug and socket, which is great. Not much room for adapters uh, for you know fitting a pump that type of thing because the shape of the frame there, um, even the, the water bottle there had to be strapped on, which is fine. That's an adapter kit you can get. So we need to take this off somehow. These are the tools you need. <clears throat> this is one option anyway. <clears throat> you need a Phillips screwdriver, a decent one, for the cable retaining screws on the frame before you take the front wheel off. Uh, you either need an 18mm socket or uh, a wrench like this with um, good jaws so that you don't round off the axle nuts. You need this to slacken off the brake cable for the front so that you can unclip the, um, uh, the, uh, the cable from its holder and the brakes then just fall apart to allow the wheel to come out easily. You don't have to take the cable out off or anything, just uh, unclip it and put it back in with this. But to, uh, to give yourself some leverage for the tension on the cable, you need those pliers. And that's that's this piece here. So that clip there, once you hook this part back in to the other half of the brake, we'll show that later. You need to push, pull this cable back through again, hold it with the clips and uh, just tighten this so that the brakes are almost in contact with the wheel. Right, so let's have a little look at this. It looks like there's a nut under there, as well as the one carrying out this procedure. So let's just use that back and see what's going on. This cable enters through a slot in that, so I think it should be able to pull off the position back. There we go. So, look at that, that's interesting. Okay. Now, all we need to do is release that nut, not take it off. Um, pull it back enough 
to drop the wheel out. Uh, special washer in there holding it. Now this should be a plug and socket. It's held on by a screw. Just there, so I'm going to take that screw out and try and undo this, this plug and socket here. And that should be, apart from taking this off here, all that's needed. So let's have a look at that. There's a Phillips, Phillips screw there, a proper Phillips screwdriver. There is no excuse for using the wrong kind of screwdrivers. All it does is damage the screws. I noticed that's not very tight in there. So there is slack on that, could have been tightened further. This, this is how it came from Halfords, which are very good. I've had three bikes from there. Um, Now, the washer there as well, important to note. And that's that released. So, there's an arrow there in white and there's a black arrow there which shows which way around that connection goes, which is obviously important, otherwise you'd be going backwards while trying to pedal forwards. So let's just try and pull those apart. No instructions anywhere as to what you do with these things. You can't screw because it's electrical connection. So it does, it just pops apart. Look at that, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pins. The battery is switched off, by the way. It's not out, but it's switched off. That's why the arrows are there to align. You must be very, very careful to align those properly when you put them back again. So you can see now, this is completely free. I discovered this clip is broken. That's nothing we've done because we put the bike under no pressure whatsoever. And the screw is loose as well. So I might have some kind of washer there to, to help with this when I fit the thing back again later. Not very happy with that. That, of course, is what the clip should look like. So, what we'll do now is turn the bike upside down and take the wheel off. I need to slacken this up a little bit to get that out. This is an Allen screw, so there's nothing at the back of it that needs to be held. Uh, we're using a proper Allen key, which in this case is a 5 five millimeter. I'm being careful not to scratch the paint. There we go. That's that done. And that's it. There we go. So the wheel is now free to drop out as soon as we slackened off these nuts. Now as you can see the bike's now upside down resting on the floor. We're gently done, no problem. The control there is very firmly fixed, there's no, no, no damage there. Um, the brakes are released. The spanner we're going to use is the shifting spanner which is in very good condition. So it's not going to round off the nuts there and I'm going to start with this side. This is an 18mm nut. The only size that's not available in the socket set I've got, which was brand new, but purposely for bikes. Now I don't have a torque wrench, but I've got a good idea there of how tense this should be. I'm just going to take it to the end. You can see there it's got a washer and then it's got another washer to hold the hub in place to stop the hub rotating with the wheel and that's that's this washer just under here. You can just see it clips into that hole there. That will be released in a sec as I move the wheel. It's going to come out now. I'm going to do the same on the other side. careful here not to hit this. We'll keep square on the nut so we're going to have to do it the other side actually. This isn't too tight I'm just gradually increasing the force there because I don't want to overdo it. I want to know roughly how tight it is. Torque range setting, I think, says about 27 newtons, kilonewtons. Um, 
but having stripped down a number of car engines in the past, I use torque wrench a lot, I kind of know machinery and what's sort of required intentions and how not to over tighten particularly. So you can see plenty of room there's a cutaway here uh, in the axle for the nut to be rotated. And that should be plenty of space there now to get both of those out. That one's out. Plenty of space there now to get these washers out. There's the hook. That's done. On this side. These stop the axle rotating because the axle is, has two flats and this these washers also have flats so they can't rotate. And that hook links the thing into the frame so that so the washer can't rotate, the axle can't rotate, only the hook can rotate. So that's there we are. There's the wheel out. <coughs> It's quite heavy. And the good news is, in my toolbox, never throw anything away, I've actually found some rubber washers, which uh, this looks perfect. This is the screw that holds the cable in place, and this fits perfectly over it. So, what I can do with that, if, depending on the size of the clip. If the clip fits over that extension I'll keep it, if not I'll cut that off and just keep the rubber part um, and that will, that will help keep this in place then. I won't use this clip because that's the mechanism that fits around it. I want to use that clip because it fits around the, the cable neatly. Um, I'll turn it inwards so that's against the frame. I may not do that, it may come off. Um, that needs to be against the broken piece. So I'll probably keep that on the outside. But I've got several of those things there, so uh, I'll, I'll probably also fit one on the other just in case there's any strain that's causing that to break. I actually think it was an installation problem because I've also noticed um, a slight uh, piece of damage on the cable, which I'm extremely annoyed about. There's no excuse for things like this. As you can see just there, now there's no damage to the insulation around the core, but that's not the point. That shouldn't have happened. Somebody's pinched that with something and that's that's not right. So I'll have to put a bit of insulation tape around there. And there's the inside there. You can see all the sockets for the pins. So that was very, very straightforward. Reassembly, very straightforward. <clears throat> here's where the wheel needs to go. And here was, here's where the wheel is. Now, obviously, there's a cable on one side and that has to go back on the correct side. You can see where that is, due to the cable there. So we'll drop it in. You need to make sure the washers are on the outside of the frame and that the shape, that shape there, needs to, on the axle, needs to engage in the frame itself, just there. Check the same on the other side. Almost. I'll just rest that there for a second while I encourage it in. It's probably going to drop because I'm doing it one handed. And what's stopping that now is that washer there. I just need to lift this up and get that out of the way. There we go. That's that one. Try the same on the other side. It's not, so it should just drop in. And it does. Bit of judicious tapping. It needs to go down flush. It's not flush, it's slightly within flush, but it's down at the bottom of its slot. Um, it's easy enough to tell because if the wheel spins and it's straight, <coughs> and the gap is even, then it's in properly. So we need to do then is make sure that lock nut, lock washer, slots into its 
it's the hole there. Let's just tighten that up a little bit so it stays. Right, that's in, that's not going to fall out. Do the same to the other side. Camera work is awful on this, I'm doing it one handed, I don't have a stand tall enough. Now, the important thing when you tighten these nuts up is do it bit by bit on both sides, do it evenly. Um, as it gets tighter, just do it less than one flat at a time um, until you feel it's a suitable tension. Um, the average for nuts actually is you do it as far as you can do it uh, gently and then an extra quarter turn. But you have to use your own guidance on that unless you have a torque wrench, in which case the book will tell you. I think it's between 25 and 27 kilonewtons for this. I don't know what that is in pounds. And then, of course, what we're going to do is put this slide this cap back over here and refix this onto there after we've plugged in to here. And that's the bike back together again. Apart from the brakes, we'll do that in a sec. When you tighten these nuts up, you're not tightening each nut against each other along the shaft. You tighten it up against this nut here. And it's important when the wheel is out not to let anybody play with it because they are adjustable the same as these nuts. But they dictate the pressure on the bearings inside the hub uh, and the distance as well. If you unscrew this a turn and screw the other one in a turn in the same direction, the wheel would move and it would be offset so it wouldn't be central. So it's essential that they stay where they are while the wheel is off and that you gradually tension these up against each of those uh, until you get to the right the right tension. Okay, so we're back on the stand and all we need to do now <coughs> is reconnect the brake here. So as you can see, sponge, this, this rubber bit here is a protector for that, that slots into this here. So all we need to do is bring these together, push the rubber back up here all the way. Eventually, let's see. Pop that back in its slot there. Then the rubber pushes back up to here. Now all we need to do is pull this through and tighten. That's better. It's a fraction more. Just hold that there while I tighten it. Great. And of course, an adjustment up on the handlebar as well there, but that's about right. That's so I'll tighten that properly now. Again, you don't need to squash this cable. A firm pull without pulling it out of its socket, that's fine. Uh, covers an emergency stop. That's it, the whole thing is done. That's how easy it was. Cable clips, I've used those rubber inserts, you can just see over there, even for the bottom one, as well as the one that was damaged on top. One just there, and I've covered that cable damage as well. That's that. So we're all ready, ready to go. So to get in the car now, all we need to do is take off the cable clamp, unplug, um, slacken off those two nuts, and take the thing out. That's it. Throw it in the car. Brakes, of course, as well. That's it. Hope that was helpful.